Do you think- Isn't that interesting though, John, their response to it? You know, yeah. it wasn't a case of, it wasn't like, um, you know, they broke down in tears and they were just so upset. And my, my, my cousin is scared of dogs because his parents are scared of dogs. Interesting now, my cousin's kids are scared of dogs. Is sorry, my cousin's kids are now scared of dogs. Isn't so that like, interesting? There's a there's a cult, yeah. There's a culture there, isn't there? It's like we we pass things on to our children because that's what we're used to. But actually, it's about how we break this cycle. You know, dogs aren't dangerous. You know, um, so they can be. But the whole point of the message is, you know, we have to break the cycle. I think it will take two or three generations until death is normalized in society. And I think when we get to that point, um, I think when we get to that point, I think people will actually treat each other with more kindness and care. And like, I think it's as important to teach children who don't go through a loss than it is for those who do go through a loss. You know, one in 29, sorry, every 22 minutes in the UK, a parent dies in the UK, every 22 minutes. So that's not including aunties, uncles, siblings, grandparents, and even pets. So... That already is quite a, a big number, but actually the ones who don't suffer it, they they are as, as important to educate. So they have an understanding of what their friends are going through. And actually, if we teach it at a young age, Reese, the adults who become adults, um, they will then know how to communicate to their friends in the streets rather than thinking, oh gosh, so-and-so is coming across the road. They can have some simple tools in knowing how to communicate to their friends. And actually, guess what? With some simple tools, Society is kinder. And actually, that person who's going through that loss actually feels some love and care and kindness. And that has that, those simple things, massive, massive impact. Yeah. It changes things. 100%. 100%. The world would be a much better place if simply if we were just a bit more kinder to, to one another. It's, it's as simple harder. as that. It's not, it's not hard. People, people struggle. Got so many examples. People saying that's all good job. I'm not sure what to say, but it requires a bit of bravery. But bravery actually isn't required as much when we have education. Just educate people. So, what would what would be um, what would be some useful tools then, John, for somebody who's going through bereavement at the moment and they just can't seem to, you know, move on or, or, or progress forward? What would you say is something useful? So firstly, everyone's grief and, and circumstances are different. I would, my advice would be is identify what your needs are. Um, some people, obviously, again, our needs are all different. Um, Julia Samuel, who I interviewed on my podcast, um, sorry, Lucy Hone, who I interviewed on the podcast, uh, it was Dr. Lucy Hone. She's a TEDx speaker. Um, she designed, has designed a course on this as well. And she basically says there's like different pillars of requirements of human needs. And an example of this, one of the needs is like physical contact. One of her clients who, who carried out her course with Lucy, um, her physical need was her husband died and having no one in bed with her just next to them was absolutely tearing her apart. So when people say, oh, whatever you need, give me a call, let me know if I can help, it's actually identifying then who these people are that I truly trust. And actually, I know I've got my back no matter what. And I'm looking at these people going, right, where can I put so-and-so in my list of needs? So she actually created like a rotor of two of her closest friends to sleep in the same bed as her for a, over a period of a few months. So it's actually creating a plan. And with planning, it's about taking control. And with control, you move forward. Because grief is just completely, you just... There's no control at all. You've, you've literally, your whole world has been tipped upside down. So, that, that, you know, there's, there's simple things there. Simple acts of kindness for people to offer. You know, if you're not sure what to say, take some food around, take a bowl of lasagna, make some lasagna, leave it on someone's door, and then just text them, I've left this on the door for you, thinking of you. You know, those little simple acts, even if they hate lasagna, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Make them a cake. Oh, gluten free. It doesn't matter. It's about showing that intent that you care. Uh, and that's, that's all we want as humans. We want to know we're being thought about. We want to know that we're cared about. Uh, it doesn't require a lot. You're making lasagna anyway. One of, yeah. one of the greatest lines, John, sorry to interrupt you there, but you, what you said there is really important. I just want to touch on it. 
uh, some, someone said this to me years ago. Uh, every human being has an invisible tag around their neck saying, make me feel important. And that is, and, and, and what you said there, you know, it, it, it's just showing a simple act of kindness, showing that you, you are actually thinking about this person. You know, you are in the minds, you are, you are needed, you are wanted. Uh, but yeah, carry on. Sorry. No, 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 I, I totally agree. I totally agree. So for someone who's going, who is actually suffering bereavement at the moment, who's actually grieving at the moment, um, firstly, my sort of key advice to them is don't be kind to yourself so if you're having a really bad day and you feel like you're not moving forward what i've learned is um actually having a bad day or if someone needs to be in bed all day crying and what i need to, what i'm trying to say to people actually crying is actually moving forward it's actually taking steps the people that just put themselves into work 100 hours a week um, and think that's moving forward, grief will get you at some point. So actually having these bad days is actually part of it, unfortunately. That is you acknowledging, that is you having a bad time, but actually when you love somebody, it's going to bloody hurt. So unfortunately, you can't escape that. So I would say to people, you know, learn to sit in that grief, uh, accept those bad days, um, and actually over time, you just have less bad days, and that's moving forward. Some real practical stuff. I'm a massive believer in getting outside, no matter what what level of physical condition you're in. Go outside for a walk, 15 minutes. Nobody has ever done a physical exercise and then regretted it. No one has ever ever regret, regretted doing a physical exercise. So go for it if you can, if you can run. Go for a run, 20 minutes. I promise you, it will help you, 100. percent there are connections between the tablets of antidepressants and the same re results, the same um, levels of, of support you get from when you go for when you actually carry out physical activities. One's natural and one's not. So you know, I'm not. By the way, I'm not against medication. I'm just saying doing it doing it naturally for me. That's how we really truly move forward, and it doesn't require a lot to go for a ten minute walk. And actually, even if you're in a wheelchair, go and get some fresh air, going outside in the light. And these things can really, really change your mindset. And changing your mindset is how you move forward.